to stop for a second and think, and I'm just asking you now, with another task put at our feet, I don't know. I guess, do you think this is a good choice for us? Because I, 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 I don't trust myself right now, because I've already done plenty of things that I wouldn't do. I don't trust myself in the moment. All right. You seem to be used to these things. You seem to have a head on your shoulders. I'm not saying I trust you, but maybe I do trust your judgment. Uh, at this, she she smiles kind of kind of meekly, and she looks at you honestly, and she says, "I'm from I'm from a place where anything that we've seen since we met would have driven the average person crazy, and super beings are commonplace." Um, she says. In that world, I was less than nothing, she says. And once I came here, I was granted the power to make a real difference and change lives. Um, she looks at you and she says, that's what I want and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Then she looks at you and she looks down to your right elbow to the band of silver and she nods and she says, that's why you're here and why you're doing all of this, right? If she's referring to my body, yes. If she's referring to the silver band. I, you get the confusion. impression, you get the impression that she has been watching you all interact with, you know, like the grandmaster and everything that's been happening, everything she's witnessed. And her impression of you is that you're on a search for some kind of knowledge involving your limbs and whatever the grandmaster just did. There's, there's some kind of connection that you're searching for something connected to all of that. And she's implying you're, you're, you're only doing the same thing. All the rest of us are doing. You're here in pursuit of whatever is most important to you. And she's just kind of gleaned through her experience with you that there's something going on with all of that stuff. That's like kind of the reason you're willing to go out of your comfort zone and, and do what needs to be done. You know what I mean? So does that make sense? Yeah. He's just, I mean, it does it to me. I'm just saying like for, I mean, does for your character, does that kind of answer? Yeah, no, yeah, for the most part, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it gives him a bit of the uh, kind of... He need basically, right now, Ren needs a... Uh, he needs a, not necessarily a motherly, but like a, like, like a big brother or a big sister or like someone he can trust. And he, he, it's not like he doesn't trust his... Uh, companions too much i get you but i get but you. like he feels like they're kind of in the same boat as him and she has that little bit more of the veterans knowledge yeah so he's kind of i was like he, he felt like he needed to uh well and she's the closest thing to a normal human he's really even been yeah and he felt like he needed someone just to kind of push him <laughs> in a direction just to make him feels like his feet are you know he's getting a little bit out of control and he needed to get his feet back on the ground a little bit to get, get regain some control and just, just no, yeah, and of, his, just his right psychological direction. makeup definitely leans to not just feeling overly, you know, he's not like a, I'm going to go live out in the wilderness by myself for the rest of my life. And I don't fucking, I don't need anything. And I'm a, he's, you know, he's got his own kind of resent that remark. GM. I'm saying he ain't, he ain't <laughs> you, saying. he ain't you just like you ain't him. Right. <laughs> so, so anyway, all right. Um, how do you, wh what else would you like to say or do Kilo? What's. Um, if she said all that, I will go back, turn to the guy who's holding the book. And I'll just kind of have a slightly refound, uh, refound composure, and I'll be like, "Yes, I, the one makes the red decision. moves towards this um, entity to interact with him. You mirror seeing the confidence in his step, steps up besides him and flanks him in a show of solidarity. Like, I'm here for you. You're not alone. Right on. Right on. All right.
right? So you step I'll go, up. Go ahead. I'll go ahead and uh, stick my hand out, like uh, with my thumb basically pointing to the ground, and I basically put it uh, somewhat close to Ren's chest, not like real close, more like maybe two feet away, and just say, don't worry, I'm the leader. What's going on? Talk to me. I'll look again at the combo, just being like, what the fuck are you doing? Right. And then I look at him and I'll say, what? You say you didn't want to do it, so, you know, I'll go ahead and take it. Didn't it's say fine. Didn't do it. I said, give me a moment. I gave you a moment, and now I'm the leader. All right. Is that what you want to say? Yep, yep, yep. All right. You say that. How do you, how do the, how do you and Ymir respond, Ren? I have no fucking pride over this issue. I get, I'm just purely annoyed by his ridiculous antics, and I just back, take a step back, and fucking just do like a whatever, and piss. kind of wave my hand at him. Yeah. Like, okay. You be, you be just grunts, kind of. It's a half chuckle, half grunt underneath his breath, like not this shit again, because he's seen this interaction too many times already. <laughs> All right. So, Akamo, what would you like to do? As you step up and uh, you say you're the leader, the being turns towards you and waits just a second, almost like for confirmation. So you're standing right in front of it. Do you want to say or do something? Okay. Nope, I nod and I say I'm ready. You nod, and as you do, uh, this being uh, says to each of you in your minds, um, it says... Uh, the contract is to resolve uh, whatever the cause of the bitter creep be. If you complete it and return here and are successful in eliminating the threat to this land, you will be rewarded with one doorway of your choosing. You will be given you will be given access to tier two information resources on the denizens held within, and your time with your selection will be one hour. At this, it looks up at you, and it just kind of waits to to get a response. I turn to my comrades and kind of like gesture like a huddle. Okay, you as you do that, Harmony is kind of like, she's got her eyebrows kind of up and is wondering if you're wanting her there too or not because they were going to let you guys deal with all this, but then she kind of got pulled in and she's so she's kind of half standing. Does that make sense? She's kind of half in and out wondering if you guys want her influence or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give her a gesture like, come here, okay. come here, come here. All right. Anybody else doing anything? You guys just all huddling up? Is that right? I'll take a step forward, but I'm not leaning in. Okay. All right. Yeah. There's there's some bo. Um, um, it's been a Ymir, while since we've Ymir, had baths, people. Ymir, Ymir takes a knee. To, okay. To be even with the huddle. Yeah, which puts you basically as even as he right can. next to everything in the entire hallway. Because Jesus, you're huge. So yeah, yeah, you you go ahead and uh. You go ahead and take a knee. You're right there in the mix. Everybody huddles in. And um, what do you say, Akama? Uh, Harmony, are you familiar with these lands at all? Or is this uh, pretty new to you as it is to us? She she nods and says, um, I've done a, a fair bit of exploring of this territory, yes. Uh, from what we grasp from the time where we were being spoke upon the uh, different areas of, uh, I guess, well, when you were telling us about the certain locations for uh, information that would basically help us gain renown, 
yes. uh, the bitter creep was one of them. And uh, from my correct. understanding, from my understanding, uh, it was some type of random frost or cold that no one knows what the what was it about. And uh, supposedly there's a settlement there. Uh, she says, correct. Um, that's that's uh, the information that I shared on your maps. Um, do you know how long the travel time will be? Um, she's about to say something and then she stops and she says, uh, after just a, a second, she looks over at you, Ren, and she says, this may be a third benefit I hadn't considered. Um, she says, you seem like you could use a little bit of time, uh, in a more... Uh, and she kind of looks up over her shoulder, trying to kind of think of the right world word. And then she looks at you and she says, sedate and creative environment. Yes. She says, perhaps a place where you could work your, uh, uh, work your engineering skills to relieve, uh, some of the stress of the, of the mission at hand. Um, perhaps even resupply and arm yourself. Uh, with your techno wizardry, techno wizardry, and she's kind of asking the question like, does does it? Could you use a place to have like you know a little bit of time to kind of to actually like you know fucking create and and repair and retool and all that shit? I mean, that's pretty much what I've always known. It is my comfort zone. Do I need it now? Not if you need this task done first. But she shakes yes. she shakes her head and she says, I think I think the two uh could work well together as goals. Um she says, um, there is a place, uh a traveling carnival, if you will, um, that is called the Wandering Aristocrat. She says, This place is and she searches for words and then kind of shakes her head and says I, best best to see for yourselves but indeed it is a place for um adventurers to regroup and for uh artisans uh artists and uh tinkerers to ply their trade and and uh for smithies to hone their skills um she says there are many opportunities for employment and advancement um, many interesting individuals, um, who are able to lend, uh, a variety of services and many contacts to be made for the future that could help you greatly. Um, she says, if you were to endeavor to satisfy the contract for Metadyne in the bitter creep, as well as the one, the contract here, um, you could employ the wandering aristocrat um to circumvent some of the more difficult travel elements that would be before you to get to the heart of the bitter creep um she said all three goals are uh are mutually beneficial yes i would think so All right. What do you guys want to any? If you guys want to ask anything or say anything, just let me know. That's pretty much the end of her spiel. Unless you have something else you want to. I look at the other two members of my party just to see what their reaction or thoughts are to what she said. Ymir says what? Ymir. What? What? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm. No, no, no. I'm. I'm waiting for somebody who's the more talkative to the party to to take the lead because Ymir has to listen really hard during these conversations. Remember, <laughs> so true. I That's can't. True. He can't well, really true. formulate. He can't really formulate an answer like. Yep. Fifty percent English. So yeah. I was just. Yeah, I just looked at my two party members to see what they're. Response was to 
that. Uh, yeah, I mean, understanding um, what she what she's offering, Ymir is excited about the prospect of uh, <laughs> smithing, and you you know. The, he hasn't been around a smithy in a very yeah. long time, and just like Ren, that's his happy place. Yeah. So he's excited by the prospect of there being a hammer and anvil he can get behind and maybe get work on some uh, of what they discussed back at the bar with yeah. BB. Fuck yeah, man. So Ymir nods his head in agreement, like uh, it's whatever the group decides he's willing to do. He's all he's all for it. The plan sound her plan sounds very solid, but it's all up to the party's agreement. Ymir is ready to go, though. Akama. I give a thumbs up and say if it makes it less fidgety, I'm all about it. Okay. Oh, wait, thank you so much, dear leader. <laughs> I smirk and kind of do like a little bow. All right, so as you do that, let's see. So that being is still kind of leaning forward, just anticipatorily waiting, and it hasn't moved at all since it, it paused. Um, and as you look back and give it the thumbs up, um, it just nods briefly. Um, it holds the, it spins the book around 180 degrees so that it's basically holding it out in front of you as the representative of the group. Uh, and it it makes a motion with its other strange ghostly kind of hand, uh, where it gently sets it down on the page that is selected on the book. Uh, and then holds it out to you in a gesture of now, you know, you do the same. So it's basically wanting you to put your handprint on the book. You would assume as a, a kind of acknowledgement of the contract. I don't like signing my life away. Did you guys, long it... did you guys oh, catch ahead. what it's offering? Like you, you're, you're all three understanding that there's like two different contracts for the same thing, right? Yep. Okay. And you get what, what this that. you get what this creature is offering you guys as the reward, besides like extra renown with with this faction. There's also a million uh, credits offered. But what That's else? from Metadyne. This well, being is B... access to tier two information oh, tier two, and resources. Tier two, yeah. yeah, but I don't know what that means exactly. That's what I wanted to make sure of. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have. I don't. Yeah, I my I, me or my, myself and my character don't know what tier two access means. Okay. Um, like I don't know the importance. Just so I am clear, this being is metadyne, right? Same no. faction as or not? No. This no. this being is from part this, of the church. Yeah. This is the they've identified themselves as the Brotherhood of the Grail. Here. That's okay. why. Um. That's why Harmony had that kind of slightly uncomfortable look on her face when. That's. I, I. Yeah. I. I thought Harmony was laying out the plan, and we were all like, "Yeah, that's what we're doing." So why are we stamping our hands with this one when we agreed to Harmony's plan? That just that didn't make any sense to me. No worries it's at all. like a two for one situation. Like, hey, you're gonna do this. Also, can you? You're gonna do it anyway, so you'll be yeah. able to get some more information from us if that's the case. It's kind of like, hey, you're already mowing my, my my neighbor's lawn. Do you mind just hitting mine up and trimming my side, you know, shit gotcha. while you're doing okay. it? Okay, all right. Maybe a little just extra so, support. You're just so yeah. Now now yeah, I'm it, clear. It's not an it. opposition. Just, it's a, a uh, okay. addition. That's to. what I was. That's what I was. At least what I. At least about. what I understood. I could. That's what I was confused about. I was like, why are we agreeing to go with a faction with another faction right in the we front take of the all face jobs. of Dime, <laughs> Right. No, I mean, that's just how I looked at it. No so worries at all. My bad. That's no <laughs> worries. Guys. That's what I what? wanted to make sure is that everybody really <laughs> kind of gets now. When it comes to the reward, yeah, I understood. The I understood the, the objective, just not the reward. I don't understand what that access entails. Okay, so what, means even. what what this guy was talking about, the reward from the Brotherhood of the Grail, is going to be that you're going to get to choose one of the prisoners that's held inside of this place. You just, you guys just saw two of them. 
there's a whole bunch more. You're going to be able to choose one of the prisoners within this place. You're going to get to research them with level two clearance for this facility, which means, um, like, Ren, you know right away that basically that means you're not going to get just superficial knowledge. You're going to get some pretty in-depth details, but it probably means that you're not going to get, like, the most secret details about the information they have on these beings, okay? Still, but, I mean, is, but, but meaning, like, is this, like, just information on the particular person or, like, access to knowledge they have or what? No, I mean, this, is, this is basically look, being able to look through their libraries on to research whatever being it is you're going to choose to go and see, okay? But, like, uh, I guess what I'm confused is, like, what does that mean as far as, like, what are we researching about these beings? Just anything you want to know. It's let me let me finish, and you guys will. I think sure, it'll yeah, make yeah, more sense. So essentially, it's kind of it. What they're kind of saying is, there's almost going to be like a large number of gods that you're going to get an hour. You're going to get to pick one after ch- after looking up a bunch of information if you choose to to check out all kinds of different things about these powerful beings. After you look up information on them and pick one of them, you're going to basically get to go and you don't know what it means by visit or interact with. Uh, You don't know if that means fight or kill or like, you don't know, but you're going to get an hour to go into their kind of quote unquote cell and interact with them. And since you guys don't know what these what these beings are really about or information about them yet, you don't really know if that, you know, you don't know if it's supposed to be, okay, you go and see this thing, and if you kill it, you're supposed to be granted this. Or if you go to this being and solve a riddle, maybe it'll do this. And you see what I'm saying? So the, this could be anything from, like, us getting access to going in and fighting and killing something and gaining access to what it had on its person to maybe learning about its family history to maybe learning some spells it knows to absolutely I mean it, this it, could be almost of, anything almost anything but, but so guaranteed what I'm to be is the level high two level access stuff. the level two stuff though it's like what is level two access because it's level so two access think of it this way something then what, no, I mean, no no, what no. Else is there? think of it like this level two access to their information means that If it was like, for instance, level one access, it would be something like just the name of the deity or being, um, the realm that it came from, maybe like an an incredibly brief history. That's part of the tier. It's just when you said killing something, that seems like that would be like maximum access to kill something. That's why, that's what threw me off. Oh, no, no, no. The yeah the the level of access to the information has nothing to do with the level of the creature or with the way you're going to interact with the creature. It's just being able to, it's just getting more than basic information. So that might even include like a vulnerability where level one okay, would okay. just be like you know, the absolute basic like legend of whatever it is. Does that make sense? That makes more sense. I was thought you were saying like level two access means we've got access to some knowledge better than level one, obviously. No, but not I, everything. I didn't. I didn't but mean to make it sound like it. a game mechanic. It's just kind of like the way they yeah, reference well, like the killing information. Things, the here. killing things went through it all because I was just like, wait, like killing something seems like that's final, which means like that would be higher access than yeah, just yeah, asking yeah. a more important question. Like you know, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So I, I got fixated on that. Um. Okay. okay. So everybody's clear on that. Um, would you, Akama, is there, uh, first off, let me give everybody an opportunity. Is there anything anybody wants to ask, do, say, we're good? Okay. How long is the contract open for? Uh, it replies to you indefinite. So we can complete it anytime we want, as long as it gets completed. It nods at you and it says there are others on this task as well. So the first Mm -hmm. to complete is is uh, the only to be rewarded. Okay. All right. So you place your hand down on the book 
And as you do so, there's a slight kind of stinging sensation as some light illuminates out around your handprint. You pull your hand away and you see that some of the skin is just slightly kind of uh, singed. Uh, just very gently, you could tell that to a normal person, this may have hurt a little bit, but your flesh is is unlike mortal flesh in many ways. Um, you take your hand away and just kind of scrub your fingers across your palm, and uh, within just a second or two, everything looks fine again. Um, it closes the book at this, uh, turns and begins floating back off from where it came. Um, Harmony looks over at your group and nods. Uh, and she says, um, uh, when you're ready, uh, we can start heading, uh, uh, to the port, uh, and catch, uh, the airship back down to the base to pick up your vehicle. And she nods at you, Ren. Um, and she says, um, if you would like. Uh, I would be willing to stay one more night uh, if you want to leave in the morning um, so that I could see you off and give you any last uh, bit of advice or or assistance. Um, And at this, Pilgrim kind of claps her hands just a little bit. You can tell she's sort of like, there's something she's wanting to do here at night. You, you You don't know what it is, but you can tell she's kind of hoping to have to stay overnight. And, um, Harmony kind of looks at you guys and she says, it's completely up to you. She says, you can leave right away. Um, and, uh, I will go as far as your vehicle with you and then give you instructions on how to reach, uh, the wandering aristocrat. If that's the path you would like to, to choose. Um, she says, your, um, your compatriots will meet up with you as soon as you're back uh, uh, where your vehicle is located uh, because uh, the denizens of this temple um, do not appreciate uh, beings who are, and she kind of pauses for a second, um, and then she she kind of completes her, her sentence quickly, reliant or overly reliant on technology. Um, She says, uh, for this reason, he is quite unwelcome here. Um, uh, She says, but I will signal uh, in a moment once we get outside um, for him to begin preparing for the journey ahead. Um, All right. She looks around and just sees if anybody has anything they want to ask. I don't know how good of a teacher you are, but I'm always consider myself a fairly decent student. Is there any chance that there's any knowledge you could share with me? Maybe the beginnings of a spell or something you have access to that maybe I don't. Um, and I'll look at I'll look at Harmony when I say this, and then I'll do a quick glance at Pilgrim too, just to see like, hmm. Okay. Um, Pilgrim doesn't really seem to respond. That you don't know that she's really a being that's much more than instinct and a little bit of kind of childlike personality. Um, you're not picking up like grand spell casting intellect from her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, no, that's fine. Yeah. I just, um, but she, so she looks little. a little lost, but um, when you say this uh, harmony, actually she kind of focuses for a second and she says, I keep thinking that you would, you would be well met with my father. Um, she says, I think, uh, I think when I speak to him next, um, you will be a topic of much interest between us. Um, she says, I intend to visit him, uh, in Whistler's Peak when I'm done in this region. Um, she says, uh, I, I would very much enjoy introducing the two of you, uh, should you be able to make your way there? Um, she says he is closely aligned uh, in, in acumen to you, I think. 
Um, she says, I, and she kind of shrugs and just kind of, it, almost like she's showing off her kind of fairly impressive frame and, you know, physical attributes. She says, I am more of a uh, stick the pointy end in the scary thing uh, kind of combatant. Um, I'll, most, I'll gesture to her weapons, though, and I'll be like, yet you do have devices that assist you. Uh, and at this, her smile grows very broad and warm, and she looks at you thoughtfully, and she says, Like I said, my father loves his daughter. He is the one you should speak to. I'll just bow in recognition of what she means by that. So, and then to almost exemplify the point, she holds a finger up, kind of like remembering something. She reads into a pouch... And as she reaches into the pouch, she pulls out uh, what looks to be to her convertible a bear and that her dad bought her. Oh. <laughs> she pulls out what appears to be a small metallic pill that has a single black stripe on it. Um, as she hands it over to you, you see that it's the the surface of the pill almost looks like it's covered in like grains of diamond. Um but the black ring around the middle, it it's jet black, completely colorless and not you know not even a, a shimmer uh, when it reflects light. So, uh, um, as she releases it into your hand, um, she says, "This is a communication device that he's been working on that we've been trying to test out." Um, she says, if he happens to reach you over it, um, make sure to tell him I gave it to you and said, and tell him that I recommend you and him become friends. And she just kind of smiles at this and drops it into your palm. Before I close my fingers around it, I'll ask, isn't this intended for you? Don't you need it? Uh, she kind of chuckles, uh, really amusedly. And she goes, she goes, I've got bags full of this kind of garbage that he's always tinkering with. She says, trust well, me, well, then, thank it would you be for a your fun garbage. Diversion. And I'll, I'll laugh slightly too. and be like, well, thank you for your garbage. <laughs> all right, she nods. Uh, all right. You said uh, metal looking pill with a black stripe. Yep. Um, All right, so anybody else have anything they want to say or do right now? Is there... I'm good. Okay. Yeah, good Ymir team. was just going to tell Harmony, lead on. That's all. Because she's, once again, she's uh, kind of got a plan and driving the direction forward. So well, Ymir's did, just... Were we, were we meeting with her or were we staying the night and going to... Yeah, it's up to you guys if you want to stick around. With the, yeah, she left it on us. We can't just follow her because she gave it up to us to right now. And I suggested we could stay so I could learn stuff. And she basically was like, nah, I ain't teaching you shit. Talk to my daddy. So <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm looking at you guys. I mean, we could stay the night. I'm okay. Ymir, given what's happened over the course of the day and the transformation and everything that he's dealt with with his shield brother and everything he's more than happy to spend another night because he needs to collect himself uh he yeah, yeah that could just be some emotionally time maybe yep. chat with you guys we could get yeah you get a, a breather from, from that whole thing and i could maybe even tinker some right basic okay. tinker you know notes and stuff i don't have a, a full lab or anything but okay all right, so if there's anything specific anybody wants to do, essentially you guys are, um, you agree to stay the night and then you're going to head off first thing in the morning. Um, you'll take the air coach down the mountain and rendezvous, rendezvous with your vehicle and the new uh, Merc. And then from there you can choose to go to the Wandering Aristocrat and take that some of the way or try and head directly into the creep. Up to you. Um that that's the general plan everybody on board with that indeed 
Okay. Sounds good. So in order to save time, um, you guys are led out of uh, the kind of lower bowels of, of the facility. Um, and as you start ascending again, you notice that the room previously where you had interacted with Baba Took and where you had seen the bathhouse and um, that very striking female individual that had answered the door. Um, all of those doors seem closed and, and you're not hearing noise or sound come from any of them anymore. Um, you're led up past that stuff and essentially you're taken around for some um, uh, through some hallways until you're back towards like the, the outer part of the facility where there's some choices of where to go. Um, there's a couple of areas where food is set up and prepared, um, some almost like dining halls where, you know, lunch and dinner are served. Um, there's a couple of small areas that are almost like gift shops, um, you know, where they obviously are, are definitely bringing in the bulk of the income that just keeps general maintenance and stuff uh, going. One thing you notice is that in the lower areas of the facility, there's you know, obviously beings that are so powerful and artifacts and all these kinds of things with all of that, this place still runs. It still looks like it's not really funded. It looks like all of these beings kind of moved into this old kind of grand facility and did enough to, you know, make sure that it's stable after all of this time and everything and do enough upkeep to keep it in, in generally good repair. But you guys don't see all kinds of crazy, you know, nothing here looks terribly expensive. And you're definitely not seeing, like I said before, any kind of major technological infrastructure. So in a strange way, this place is kind of like a monastery. It's very humble, even though there's so much power running through this place. Um, and it makes each of you kind of reflect on perhaps that's the point. Perhaps certain beings really prefer to have a more kind of basic existence and focus more on their goals than the acquisition of things, right? Um, anyway, so as you guys head out, again, there's places to eat, places to do some light shopping. There are a couple of workshops set up. Uh, in order for patrons of this place to go and be able to do, you know, just basic maintenance and diagnostics and if they have to keep up with studies or whatever. Um, so there's... So they are okay with that use of, use of technology, even though they're not a fan of it, they're okay with the people using... Yes, they, they, okay. they don't seem to have problems with that. And there are even outlets uh, for, you know, normal uses of power. Um, it Certainly nothing where you could, you know be doing like crazy experiments or any of that kind of stuff. But there's, there are fully equipped uh, kind of like workshops that have the basics. Um, renting one of these for four hours is uh, 20 universal credits. Um, but it comes with, you basically you just need to bring your own shit in and you can't take any of the tools or anything out and you're good to go. Um, let me see. Then, there's, you don't see any shops that sell anything like weapons, armor, or anything like that. Um, you guys do notice as you're starting to kind of, you know, get out among the facility now, uh, that every now and then, um, you guys keep seeing hey, old, 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 old Snaggletooth or old Snaggletongue, uh, pop his head out and kind of peek at you guys. He always is doing it kind of surreptitiously. Uh, and he never is, you know, even coming close enough to where you could peel off from what you're doing and just directly walk over and confront him. He's always far away, but you do each of you continue seeing this guy just kind of like pop around a corner. And it's like, he's talking to somebody right over there, but he just really quick peeks around the corner so he can catch a quick you know, glimpse of you guys, and then he'll go back to what he's doing. But several times it keeps happening, and that's, that's, you're all starting to actually notice it. Um, you also notice now that 
uh, the airship is not alone, and there's actually several of these that appear to come and go at different kind of dis- uh, you know timed intervals, um, and it seems like they're actually doing a fairly brisk little traffic through this almost like tourist trap. Um, there's you know you would guess that so far in being here a few hours, you've probably seen uh, maybe a couple hundred people come and go, which is way more than what you were guessing when you guys first arrived here. Um, You also would guess there's probably at least four or five of these little air vehicles. Um, Finally, one last little bit before we move forward is that you guys are starting to notice that there are indeed armed troops uh, that seem to uh, be kind of keeping guard around here. Um, this individual uh, seems to be kind of doing rounds and just like a, a simple patrol, but he also seems to uh, he also seems to be joined by a a pretty solid number of these troops. Um, these troops apparently, uh, move in small units of six and they are completely covered in either silver metal, uh, and brandishing silver weapons, uh, or wherever it isn't metal, the hides and furs have been dyed a a bright, bright silver, um, you notice that they all are completely uh, insulated for extremely cold weather engagements. Um, And something that you notice about them is that um, they never really seem to make noise or say anything. They move uh, through the streets, um, making, you know, the normal amount of, of noise that their gear would, Um, boots, you know, crunching through, you know, the stone floors and the the alleys and such. Um, and their gear makes noise rubbing against itself and everything, but not a one of them has, has spoken or even made a, um, uh, a tired or anguished kind of grunt from the weight of their packs. Um, they're all completely quiet Um, themselves and uh, you also notice that they don't seem to communicate between the unit at all Um, every man moves as a single uh, entity um, governed by a a single mind and when one stops uh, to turn a corner um, and pivot the rest do so at exact intervals almost like some kind of machinery is at work um all right, and you guys have seen at least what you would guess to be four or five different patrols of those units kind of walking around at different intervals. So you would guess that they've got a, a, a tidy little complement of whatever those soldiers are. Um, Harmony says that later on this evening after everybody's eaten and had some downtime, um, she would like... Uh, to assemble in the graveyard um, and share with you a small ritual that she and Pilgrim enjoy. Um, uh, She says uh, they will be doing that around 9 o'clock, if you'd care to join them. Uh, We're going to say that it's about... We're going to say that it's about noon right now because you guys had you guys had started first thing in the morning um we're gonna say that it's about noon and you guys kind of have free run of the place if you want to kind of do some exploring or work on anything um i'll open it up is what what would you guys care to do with you know we'll say probably about seven hours uh worth of downtime in between little things interrupting and this and that I'm going to rent a station. Okay. Um, I'm going to gra- grab all the um, loose scraps that I had grabbed. Um, 
and kind of just dump them out on the table and start uh, sifting through those, seeing what I could use, what's useful, what's not, and then start cleaning up and maybe even reshaping some of the scrap that I found for possible future ideas for things or future components that I could use. I would also ask uh, a comma if I could see his knife so I could dismantle it and kind of uh, take it, a, like a, write down a blueprint of its setup and its designs so I can figure out what I can do and add to it or how I could add to it. How about my TW knife? Uh, the one that you wanted me to look at. Uh, yeah, not, not the vibro one. Yeah, the, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hand it to him. It's the one that I already cleaned up for you slightly. Okay. That one. Yeah. The. I the... Just, yeah. I just kind of want to uh, take off the 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 handle from the the blade itself. Look at look at its overall structure, and then kind of seeing like what I could do and how much I have to work with, and then kind of just you know you know like tr tracing a Thanksgiving yeah, yeah. turkey hand, tracing the blade to get kind of the dimensions set in my head, and you know just you know where the maybe the pins are that go into the the tang of the blade to hold it in place so I can match up everything that I need. And then um, just kind of write those notes down and measurements down and then reassemble it and give it back to him. I'm basically just taking like a cataloging of all the stuff I have right now, um, considering that we're possibly have the chance to go get more stuff and actually work in a place. So I'm kind of doing my pre setup of just seeing what I got, what I have to work with. And then maybe making a couple of like simple adjustments, like oh, I have this screw, I can shave a couple inches off the screw and use it, or repurpose it as something else, or do this little metal piece. I can maybe hammer it a little bit and maybe it like somewhat like concave, so I could use it for a cap on something later, like a uh, almost like a fuse for a container for a jewel. Maybe wrap a couple of things in wire for a power source that I could build onto later. Just you know, kind of some prep work basically. Yeah, um, you go ahead and rent that. If you want to do, uh, if you want to rent it for like eight hours. Um, yeah, just... I mean, we only have seven, but yeah, eight hours, I'll rent for the full time. Okay. And we could say that you, you pretty much get the whole eight in because you're not really getting interrupted with shit. You're just going to be sitting there fucking with stuff. So um, this is noon and we're going to be going around nine, you said. Mm -hmm. I would request request from either uh, a comma or... Um, Ymir, if they're near me, um, could one of you possibly bring me like lunch? I'm gonna gonna have, just have my head buried in this. No, I'll probably get hungry at some point, but I'll forget. Ymir nods his head in agreement. Um, he's feeling kind of melancholy and malaise himself, just with all the uh, what thoughts are going through his head but looking out for his uh partner he definitely will because he's about to go drown his sorrows in some food okay excellent and uh go ahead and take 40 universal credits off okay and um okay akama what are you doing uh i want to see if there's some type of training area uh just uh guess like a exercise facility so to say uh yeah actually there is uh kind of like a it, there, it's almost like a outdoor gym obstacle course kind of combo and cool. um as uh as you walk over there um you notice that there's some individuals actually like walking around training and stuff as well just some normal looking humans but they're they're you know you can't tell necessarily monks or what, but visiting tourists that are actually, you know, the the physical arts are kind of part of their spirituality as well, and so they this is part of their worship and all that stuff. So they're kind of doing Sweet. their thing. Um, uh, I would like to perceive on what type of fighting style they're utilizing. Uh, okay, you're able to see several different disciplines. All of them are. Uh, human varieties. Um, you see somebody working uh, with a large kind of uh, uh, judo dummy bag, uh, just doing throws and takedowns. Um, you see somebody doing, you know, pretty much traditional Western boxing, and somebody working kickboxing on a couple of different large pad stands. 
and um, you see a couple of people just working with weights um, and doing like, uh, you know, calisthenics and stuff like that. Um, you also see that there's uh, one kind of shorter, stocky guy. Uh, he's about 5'5", five, five, but he looks he looks pretty bulky. And um, he's bare-chested in some shorts, and he's uh, going up against a guy that's about 6'1", um, that's pretty wiry and lanky, and they're kind of circling each other in a large kind of sand pit, uh, just getting ready to kind of get into it. Um, it looks, it looks, you know, friendly though. Um, all right. So I would like to work out for two hours, uh, basically do nice, uh, nice deep stretches for like 20 minutes and then go into some, uh, shadow boxing for at least 30 minutes. And then after that, probably uh, find something very solid that can take my uh, kicks because I want to start working more on like of my kicking since I right on started learning about the kicks, so to say. Okay. Uh, I throw in some punches too once in a while, but basically just trying to uh, – iron like my shins and my knees uh maybe throw in some elbows i got elbows right i got elbows uh yeah, throw in some like elbows it. yeah but, um but yeah after that uh i would like to go take a shower and then go to the dining hall and eat okay excellent um okay let's let's catch it up through there you bear are going to go straight over and start eating. Is that right? When you came out, by the way, you noticed that Wotek is, he's not even, he's, he's just despondent right now. And he's actually kind of making sure to stay away from the group by quite a bit. Um, he... Well, that's how your mirror feels right now. The feeling's mutual. He's okay. kind of with given with that's why I said he's kind of out of sorts right now. Now that they're back in the courtyard and he can kind of breathe and but he's despondent. He is very upset. He's inside himself. The his his spirit is on fire and it's tearing himself apart. He's maintaining on the surface, but he is so angry i i can't describe to you the level of anger that's boiling up inside of him and it's it's a cold rage that's turning inwards on himself and he's kind of biting his teeth uh even he's just trying to get some food and drink so he can focus on something else uh other than what this feeling that's just burning inside of him right now because he it's all kind of washing over him all at once okay all right so and at this at feeling this at sensing this um wotek basically just kind of walks away and is just going to really keep a lot of distance you can tell that there's something uh, there's something like half mixed between shame and despair that's going on uh, within him right now and he's he's in that same kind of place yep. um and he's he's you can tell that he's disgusted with himself um right. so so anyway as he keeps his distance you you said that you're gonna go over you, you want to have some drinks you want to have did you ever drink the yellow substance no no i didn't okay no, i didn't you want to just set it down somewhere Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Just want to make sure. Yeah. The 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 glowing angel soul, whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> I just picture that one of those people that are at a party that like gets like a glass of champagne from a tray, but they don't drink and they just stand around for like an hour and a half and like I don't know what I'm just gonna hold this I guess for a yeah, while. That, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's very Ymir, but yeah. All right. But so I, I let's just say I let let's just say Ymir set the cup down after he real you know after he sensed the energy of uh, the interaction between Akama and um, Pilgrim that okay. he decided against 
drinking from the cup and he just kind of set it down. He paid his respects to the hosts as he was meaning to, but he never actually did drink. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. So um, you head off and you start, um, you get to what's essentially like a kind of a canvas, not canvas, but um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's like a, a canopied courtyard mm-hmm. that where where people go to eat and it's where most of the like grills and ovens and stuff are set up and so there's lots of you know large stone tables and benches and stuff and there is indeed a few different areas that easily accommodate you know larger beings um and as you go you make your way in and you're actually waited on and given complete respect by the staff um, there's a couple of what look to be kobolds. Um, it's just, you know, basic kind of reptilian, small, diminutive kind of uh, people. Um, they each stand about three and a half feet tall, and they have very inhuman appearances, but they're very capable at their job, and they're incredibly pleasant and professional and helpful. Um, and as uh, the female uh, seems to be working the grill with a fervor, um, taking on huge cuts of meat that are two to three times her size with some kind of preternatural strength at her disposal. Um, as she's wielding, you know, cleavers and, and cutting sides of beef and lamb apart and getting everything thrown on the grill, um, her companion, the male, is walking around taking orders and uh, serving and bussing tables. And... Um, once uh, they come over to you, is do you just so that I can kind of move us forward a little? Is there anything in particular you're wanting? Or are you 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 mere orders three three slabs of roasted meat and uh, a large flagon of um, mead for himself, and he points to the uh, waiter to let them know that one of the slabs of meat go over to his tinkerer friend. And he also lets him know like um, through, you know, through signage or whatever that he will be covering that tab. So that's uh, to make sure his compatriot is taken care of in his, um, the tinkerer shop. Okay. All right. So you do that. You're able to get yourself a a feast, uh, a substantial feast. And the portions and the food that they send over to Ren are, are incredible as well. Um, these these beings really know their, their job well. And you can tell trying to put out kind of gourmet meals is one of the things that they obviously use as a draw for this place. Um, everybody that stops by seems to be having a great time and really enjoying the cuisine. Um, they all... Uh, seem to be kind of murmuring and and excited about uh, their dishes as dozens of people filter in and out uh, eating. Um, We're going to switch over. Okay, Kama, we're coming right back to you. Um, As you sit there and enjoy yourself, uh, you want to have... Tearing apart the meat like a great bear myself. Ymir is lost inside his food and drink, okay. where he would normally try to be respectful or show decorum like he did at the bar. Right now, he is... It's like anger or stress. Anger eating. eating. He, <laughs> right he, he is tearing... He is conan in it up right now nice. let's just say that all right man you are you are really piling it on i'm not going to give you a total for the cost yet because we'll just we'll just keep we'll just keep going here um so as you're tearing into it you're enjoying yourself they uh the the male cobalt waiter brings over a huge it's at least a gallon and a half uh portion of uh some kind of really spicy smelling ale uh it's it's really really pungent but it has a a kind of like a hot deep kind of spice behind it as you take a whiff um and you are definitely tempted he just he as he drops it off at your table uh he just kind of waves a hand kind of like it's on the house and turns and starts taking the rest of an order over to another uh table um, and as you start whiffing it on the table, you you are it's making your stomach growl, even though it's already full of pork and beef and shit. Um, 
you want to go ahead and enjoy it? Yes, absolutely. All um, right. Your beard nods his head, uh, chugs it down after a slight toast. He raises the mug and chugs down the uh, amber liquid. 